Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. So today in the studio, I have an older vehicle sitting here. This is a 2010. Is it old? Maybe, maybe not. We're in 2021 right now, almost 2022. But to be honest with you, this thing only has 66,000 miles. So it's still kind of a baby, especially for its make and model. But when they were getting the safety inspection or they were getting it checked over for safety, somebody told them that they need brake lines, but they brought it to me so I can confirm exactly what they need. So let's get under the hood and start taking a peek. The first thing that we're always gonna take a peek at is gonna be the master cylinder. This is gonna be the area that holds your brake fluid and if you find that the brake fluid is low, then more than likely you have a leak or you have a braking issue where the pads or the pad material could be worn low. You know what? This one really doesn't look too bad. I'll open it up and take a little peek. Not much I can see in there because it has that screen in there. But I can tell that it still has plenty of brake fluid, so I don't really feel as though it has a leak. So, like I said, this has a brake line issue, or at least as far as what I was told. So we want to kind of take a peek at all the brake lines, especially the ones that we can see. Now, down along this master cylinder, it's going to have an area where lines come out of it, and generally they're going to lead to something else, such as maybe an ABS unit, or even all the way down to the brake hoses. On this one in particular, it does have ABS, so that's going to be located on the passenger side of this particular vehicle. All these lines that you can see that lead into it are the brake lines. There's going to be several different types of brake lines that you can have inside passenger vehicles nowadays. Sometimes you're going to have steel brake lines. Sometimes you're going to have brake lines that do have a little bit of a coating going around them. It's almost like a plastic of some sort. And then otherwise, you could even have the good brake lines, or the best brake lines if you ask me. And those are pretty much copper slash nickel plated. They're very flexible and they hold up to a lot of pressure overall. Another thing about those too, they don't really rot out, so you don't have to worry about them. They're almost like a lifetime brake line, which is kind of nice. So, with that said, we're just going to take a peek at all the brake lines here. You want to just inspect them. Generally, especially around where the uh, fittings are, that's going to be where the majority of the issue is. So, looking at this one, you can see where the fitting goes right into this. We're going to look right around that and see if we see any rust or rot or anything the like. Go ahead and grab onto your brake lines, give them a little wiggle, and just make sure it doesn't seem like they're flexible or they want to break in any way. There's going to be several brake lines on your car. Sometimes you're going to only have two that go from the master cylinder to the ABS, and then from the ABS, it's probably going to split off into four more brake lines. If you don't have ABS, more than likely you're going to have four brake lines that come directly from that master cylinder, heading all the way down to each brake. So with that said, completely inspect any brake line that you can see underneath the hood, especially from where the master cylinder is, and just double check to see if you see any rust or rot or anything the like. This one right here really doesn't look too bad. I can see some white corrosion in a lot of areas, but it doesn't look like it's weak in any way. What I always do is, like I said, I just grab onto them. I give them a little wiggle. I can move this whole ABS unit around with these lines. These don't seem bad at all. Huh. Yeah, Not exactly what I was expecting. I was kind of expecting to see some rotted brake lines here. Well, now that I can see all these, I'm taking a peek all the way down. I can see where they connect in down here. That looks good as well. So now that I've checked everything I can see from up top, it really only makes sense to make sure I check everything from underneath. Why would I want to do that? Well, because there's also brake lines that go underneath the whole entire car all the way to each brake. Underneath the car, you're probably going to get a lot of dirt, debris, moisture, anything the like. And of course, if you live in the Northeast like me, we get a lot of winter weather. And of course, they put down that salt brine. That stuff kind of accumulates on everything and it's going to eat away pretty much anything metal. So if you got steel brake lines like this one right here, you could potentially have an issue. Let's go ahead and get this up in the air and have a look. All right, this looks safe enough. Let's go ahead and get under here. Now for this inspection, we'd obviously do the same for both sides of the vehicle. We can find our brake caliper, we have our flex hose, and then generally what leads to the flex hose would be the steel line that would either come from the ABS or the master cylinder. So to have a better view, I'm just going to go ahead and get this plastic right out of the way. Um, these usually have some push clips. Let's see if I can get that out of there. There's one. That one. All right, so now that that's off, we can see our caliper, we've got our flex hose, we can go ahead and follow that. And you can see right where it connects onto the steel brake line, which is right up inside this area here. You can follow that steel brake line, it comes down around here, and then of course it leads up. Looking at this brake line right here, it doesn't look as though it's metal. This actually has a coating on it, and that's a protective coating, which is gonna prevent it from rusting or anything the like. Now, as you can see, everything that we can see in this particular area looks great. 
Um, so like I said, you'd want to obviously check both sides of the vehicle. This is very important. Uh, you want to make sure that the line looks good. A lot of common time, commonly, a lot of times what you're going to find is in areas that look like they have a bracket, something like this one up here. Generally, there's going to be a spot where they almost kind of like get rid of the coating on it. They just leave it bare metal for some reason. Then they plug it right in there. And then of course you got an area where moisture can make its way in and that's going to wreak havoc. This one looks pretty good. I always give them a nice little wiggle. If it feels like they want to break or they don't feel like they're secure in any way, that's something that you want to take care of and make sure you replace. You know, this one really doesn't look bad at all. I'm going to do the same to the other side of the vehicle and then we can continue. Oh yeah, this one looks good as well. Huh. Yeah, these lines are coated. These look really good. All right, so let's come back over here. This is the area where the lines come down. We've got our little coupling area. You can see where the fittings go right up into this. Generally along the areas where the fittings are, you're also going to have an area where there isn't any coating. That's generally an area that you might find some rust or rot or anything to like. Grab onto those lines. Oh yeah. Oh, these are actually really good. Huh. We'll go ahead and cover that back up. Now we can find our brake lines as they come underneath the vehicle. It's going to be the two smaller lines. The larger lines are generally some sort of fuel lines, whether it's EVAP or even the fuel lines from the fuel tank to the engine itself. Following these, I'm inspecting them, especially along all the bracket areas. These lines are beautiful. Wow. Not bad. Okay. Comes up, comes along the fuel tank. Now these lines can go pretty much anywhere. Sometimes they go over the fuel tank. Sometimes they go around it. Sometimes they're not even anywhere near it. Make our all the way our way all the way back here. Oh yeah, look at these lines. Those don't look bad at all. Follow those flex hoses down. Oh, it's looking a little moist. Ooh, oh boy, look at that. Just flaking this off, I can see some moisture coming through that right there. Ooh, just tugging on it, look at that. Can you see that flexing right there? That is not supposed to happen. There's a lot of pressure inside your brake lines. Every time you step on that brake pedal, it's gonna be forcing pressure all the way down through the lines to the brakes. And of course, that's how you're gonna stop. Now this brake line right here, as you can tell, just by moving it around, it's starting to seep a little bit. When you see fluid like that, that's pretty much a seep. If you see it looking like it's dripping out, then obviously that's a leak. But either way, seep or leak or anything the like, if you can see something that looks, wow, just like this, that's very bad. This line right here, that one, you know, it's not as bad. Um, maybe it's something that I wouldn't necessarily fail for a state inspection. It really depends on your guidelines per se. But um, this one right here, I would probably replace at the same time, especially if I was doing this one. But let's continue following it. Oh, wow. This one's really bad. If we flex this a little bit. Yeah. Jeez. It's a good thing that somebody found this and they made sure that the customer knew about it. If you're driving down the road with something like this and you go ahead and step on the brakes, fluid's going to come pouring out of this right there. Instead of causing pressure on the brake material itself to be able to stop the vehicle, you're going to be losing all of your pressure, making a big mess, of course, and you could potentially be in a very dangerous situation. Now, just because you find one leak, that doesn't necessarily mean you want to stop. You want to keep following all those brake lines and just double check to see if there's any other areas. Wow, this isn't good at all. So you can tell that they, of course, coated the lines, and then there's areas that they didn't want to coat the lines. Generally, like I said, it's where they had the clips of some sort. And then, of course, if moisture sits in between this area, and especially in the Northeast, like where we are here, we have all that salt brine and everything else. That's going to sit right inside this area, of course, right up against the metal of the brake lines, and that's what causes this issue right here. Oh, man. This brake line is really bad. Um, if you find that you have a brake fluid leak like this one right here, it's a good idea to make sure you have a nice collection bucket handy. You want to make sure that you put it underneath this area so it can collect any of that brake fluid that's coming out. Brake fluid overall is a contaminant and it isn't something that you want to just go ahead and let go into nature. You don't want it dripping on the ground or into a stream or anything the like. If a dog happens to come by and give it a little lick because maybe they think it tastes good, it's not going to be very good for their health. So with that said, make sure you have a collection bucket to collect all of this. We'll put this down underneath the infected area here. We'll continue on by checking everything else. Now, since we found that we have a leaky line, we're of course gonna have to bleed out the braking system. So what you wanna do is make your way to the actual corresponding area. So this brake line leads here. We have drum brakes on this. So it actually leads to the wheel cylinder. The wheel cylinder is located on the inside, but this is the back aspect of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this down with some 
uh, penetrant here because we're going to have to get that freed up. We can go ahead and get this bleeder boot off of here. It's just a rubber boot. Generally, I like to save these, make sure I put them back on. And then right behind that is the bleeder screw. Now what we want to do here is just go ahead and make sure that this can open up. If it can't open up or even breaks off, obviously you're going to have to replace the wheel cylinder that's located in here as well. So I'm just going to use my, my socket, see if I can get it on there. Oh, I think it actually loosened. Okay. Now we want to see if any brake fluid comes out. Oftentimes, if you do have a brake fluid leak on the line, you're going to find that you don't have any fluid that comes out of this. That's just kind of how it is. But we do want to, of course, make sure that it does open up, and this one did. So with that said, I'll just go ahead and close this. Now, since I'm going to be having to replace this line right here, obviously I want to double check every other line. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to double check that line, and I'm just going to make my way all the way across there just in case I might have happened to have missed things. It's common if you're walking along, maybe you look down for a second, maybe you don't see one of the bracket areas that the line sits into, and it could even be just a very small area, like on this one right here, where it looks as though the whole line's coated, it looks amazing like I was saying before, and then you find one area that's just a little half an inch or maybe even a quarter inch, or even two areas, that are just unsafe. If that's the case, you need to make sure that you replace those lines as well. Overall, when I'm replacing a brake fluid line like this right here, I like to bleed all the brakes. It really only kind of makes sense to me. If there's an area that fluid can make its way out, there's also a possibility that contaminants could make their way in, in which case it's no good overall. Also, this thing has 66,000 miles on it, which really isn't too much, but it is over 10 years old. Brake fluid generally doesn't last forever, especially DOT3 or even DOT4 brake fluid because that's hydroscopic. Hydroscopic essentially means that it's going to absorb moisture from in the air. If you live in a humid environment like what we do here, it's very common for moisture to somehow make its way into the braking system, in which case your brake fluid is going to be diminished. It's going to have a lower boiling point, and overall it's going to be kind of unsafe. So I'm going to make sure I do a brake fluid flush. With that said, I need to make sure that I open up all of my bleeder screws. And then of course what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this to stop leaking. We'll fix the line, and then we're going to bleed all the brakes. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the wheels. Remove the bleeder screws, make sure that they open up, and we can continue. Let's see. All right, so that one loosened up. Check the other side.
right. That one loosened up as well. Let's go double check that other rear and we can bring this down. Let's see. This brake line right here doesn't look very good either. Should probably replace that one as well. Let's see if we can get this on there. At least the bleeder screws opened up on each of the wheel cylinders, so that's a good sign for me. Uh, like I said, it's super common for these to either freeze up or break off inside the wheel cylinder, in which case you have to replace the wheel cylinder as well. This just saves me a lot of time and hassle. So at this point, what I know that I want to do is, of course, make sure that I stop the br uh, leaking brake fluid, um, and then we can start replacing some lines. So what I noticed was on this line right here, it, overall, it really doesn't look too bad. In general, it's pretty much completely coated, in exception of just the very end right here where it connects into this uh, fitting. Um, but it is very thin there. And, you know, my opinion, I can grab it, I can move this around. It doesn't seem as though it's weak or it wants to break, but it is actually very thin there. And since I'm back here anyways, it really only makes sense to just go ahead and replace both of these lines. Um, I double-checked the fronts. Those looked good. So I'm really not worried about those, but of course, once we get both of these rear lines replaced, we're going to end up bleeding the entire system overall. When we do that, we want to make sure we use the proper brake fluid as well. So with all that said, we've got our collection bucket underneath this area here. We're going to go ahead and hop up inside the passenger uh, compartment of the vehicle. I'm going to step down on the brake. When I do that, brake fluid's going to come leaking out of this area right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I put a nice rag on it. Um, essentially, I just want the rag to be able to collect the moisture that's going to be coming out of there or the brake fluid that's coming out of there without it actually just spraying all over the place and potentially getting on the ground. So, I'll just take this, just wrap it right around that line. Um, obviously, we're going to have to take care of this rag after we're done, but at least this is going to protect everything else for now. There we are. Let's bring it down and step on that brake. So now at this point I'm going to take two bar. Um, at this point I'm going to take two bars with me into the passenger compartment. Get this mat out of the way. So what we want to do is just go ahead and carefully and slowly step down on this brake pedal. What it's going to do is you're going to feel as though the brake pedal just keeps going, 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 generally almost all the way to the floor. That's because we're pressing all the brake fluid out of that rear brake line right there. And essentially, once it's all the way down, we're going to use one of these bars, whichever one fits best. We're going to press it up against that brake pedal and then use the seat to continually press this in. That's going to cause pressure inside the system, and it's going to make it so no more brake fluid starts dripping out of that line in the end so we can start working on it. All right, that's down as far as it can go. Just take this bar, slide it in here, slide it in between the seat. Now I can release this, and now we can get back underneath the vehicle. Okay, let's have a peek under here. All right, so it looks like our rag did its job. We don't have a giant mess right here from when I stepped down on the brake pedal. Of course, fluid did come out, went into the bucket like I wanted it to. Um, so let's move along here. Now the next thing we need to do is pay attention to the two lines that we're going to be replacing. We can do these in either order. Uh, this is the one that, as you can tell, has the leak. So this is the one that I'm going to do on camera. I'm going to also replace the other one off camera. That's just kind of how I roll. I don't like to look at this and you know think that this is driving down the road. So with that said, let's just come right here. 
This right here is a flex hose, and this is very important as well, so you wanna make sure that you inspect it a little bit. Just make sure it's not dry rotted, cracked, it doesn't feel like it's firm or torn or worn in any way. Essentially what this is for is so as the suspension is going up and down, these flex hoses can flex and do their job rather than trying to have like a steel brake line that comes down like this and every time the suspension squishes and moves, it's going to potentially move this around, which of course can lead to some major issues. So just, you know, double check those as well. Um, so let's just go ahead and get this fitting off of here. So I want to try to find a wrench that fits on this. Um, this one, as you can tell, is very rusted and rotted and, you know, not in the best condition. So I'm going to have to try a couple different wrenches here. I always like to try to use one of these wrenches too. It's a flare wrench, goes around the majority of it. Okay, that one doesn't fit. Let's try this bigger one. Try a 10. That feels pretty good. A little bit of penetrant couldn't hurt. Let's see if I can get this to break free. More than likely, I'm going to break the line, but. Ooh, okay, so that's good. So that broke free, but as you can tell, the line is twisting and it is breaking off just like that. Um, so let's go ahead and get my wrench out of here. We can fully remove this from the flex hose. After we get it off, we're gonna pay attention inside the flex hose here. You wanna make sure that it's not rusted or rotted or damaged inside there as well. This is super important. All right, so we're gonna hold on to this. Um, when you're making brake lines, it's a good idea to have brand new ends right here. If you don't have any, maybe you didn't buy some or you didn't know that you needed some, uh, generally you can just reuse these. So what I would do is just take it to a wire wheel, clean up the threads. We're going to have to get the existing line out of there and then completely inspect it. Assuming it looks good, we can reuse these. So I set them aside. Um, we can move along. I'm going to follow it all the way down to the wheel cylinder on the side here. And we can start removing it here and then we can get the brake line right out of this area. moving. Generally it's easier if you can get those fittings to actually break free from the line rather than breaking the line off. Um, if that's the case, usually you can just cut the line and then slide it right out of there. It just makes it a little bit easier overall, but as you can tell with this one, I'm not so lucky letting today. I guess I could take a minute and go get my other 10 millimeter wrench for this, but yeah, who's got that kind of time? Well, this thing's messing with me today. That's the thing about working on cars. Nothing's ever easy. Okay, we'll give this one an inspection. Look at how thin that line was there. Holy moly, this thing was pretty much ready to break already anyway. Unbelievable. All right, we'll set this aside. Now we can start getting our brake line out of here. You know, there's gonna be places generally that hold it in place. So you just overall wanna just pop them right out of there. As you can tell, ours, we don't really have that issue, uh, except for right up here. <clears throat> See if I can pop this out of there. Here we are, we get this line out of here. Oh, there we go. Just broke right there too, just from that little bit of movement. Jeez, I'm crow. It sure is a good thing that somebody checked this line for the person. Um, can you imagine driving around in your car? You're in busy streets. If somebody in front of you happens to stop real fast. You have to do a panic stop. This isn't going to be able to hold any pressure. This is just so unsafe. Unbelievable. Oh, all right. Well, came right apart. That happened. 
All right, so we've got this infected line right here. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that you drain out all the brake fluid that's inside these. It's going to be super important. Like I said before, you don't want any of this to seep into the soil or the water or anything like. Let's go ahead and put that in my bucket. Um, at this point, you just want to make sure that you don't have any dripping fluid. If it's continuously dripping, you want to make sure that you can stop it, whether you have to pinch the lines or whatever the case may be. Generally, like I said, if you press down on that brake pedal like what we did, it's going to cause a vacuum inside the system. And as you can tell, this isn't leaking. I'm not worried about it. But the main reason why I'm talking about this and I'm stressing about it is because you don't want to drain all the brake fluid dry from inside your braking system. You could find that you have an issue trying to bleed it out. Getting all the air out of your ABS unit can potentially be a little bit difficult and it's going to take some time overall. So with all that said, now we can continue on to starting to make our new line. The first thing that I'm going to do though is grab those fittings. I want to try to get the existing line out of them. I'm going to try to clean up the area and just inspect them and make sure that they are reusable. If they're not, I might as well just pause on this and go ahead and go get myself some more of those fittings. Okay. Let's get this in the vise. Now, when I start putting this in the vise, you're going to notice that I have it kind of off kilter, a little bit at an angle here. That's because I don't want the teeth on the vise to actually grab onto the threaded area. Once it does that, it's more than likely at the point that you're not going to be able to reuse this fitting. So generally, I try to avoid that as much as possible. I'll just carefully put this at an angle. I'm going to go ahead and try to snug this up. There we are. I don't need to damage it or break it in any way. And now at this point, a little bit of heat really can't hurt. Obviously, there could still be some brake fluid in this area or if you use some penetrant at any time. So be careful with the heat because it is going to cause some vapors and you don't want to breathe that in. So just make sure you're in a nice area where it's ventilated. You can see some bubbling there. That's good. Right. At this point, the bubbling stopped. You can see the smoke coming up from this. I'm going to cause some more smoke and use some penetrant. What I'm hoping is it's going to soak its way down in here so I can start driving this through. Let's let that sit and let the smoke dissipate for a second here. Okay. So now at this point, of course, we want to be safe as possible. This is very hot and there could still potentially be some vapors coming up off of this. I don't want anybody to get sick or hurt in any way. At this point, you can see the line starting to come through. That's a very good sign. So now that I have this moving back and forth, I'm going to continue on by letting this cool for a second, maybe spray it with some water. I'm going to cut off the remaining portion of this right here, and then I'll use my hammer and my punch, and I'll just continue on by driving this through, being very careful not to damage this or hurt myself along the way. That's not bad. Excuse me. Right under here. Okay. The threads still look great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off real quick. Okay, let's see. Locking pliers on this. I have my fingers nowhere near this. This is super important. It's gonna go ahead and grind this right off. That looks pretty great. Let's get back over to the vise. Okay. In the vise here. Once again, at an angle here. I'm just going to try to drive this through. Here goes that line. We'll recycle that. Grab onto this and we can take it to the wire wheel. Essentially, what we want to do is just clean up the threads. We're going to fully inspect this. You want to make sure it doesn't look like it's rotted or anything like that. We want to make sure that it's going to be reusable and it's going to be safe while you're driving down the road. This is going to be easiest if I just do that. I can take it to the wire wheel. Okay. Now, when you're using a wire wheel that looks like this, you want to be very careful. Of course, you could potentially get caught in it and get sucked in, maybe some loose clothing or something the like. But also, these little metal tines can come shooting out. So you need to obviously be wearing hand and eye protection. Probably don't need to tell you that. See, just like that. You wanna be very careful and that's why I use this instead of my fingers. So 
So now we can inspect this. Look at those threads. In all honesty, this doesn't look bad at all. I would say it's 100% reusable, um, but well, of course, we need to go double check the other one as well. So I'll do the same exact thing to the other one. You probably don't need to sit around and wait for that. Once that's done, we can get going on making that line. All right, now we can start making our line here. The first thing that I always like to do is just take this right here. We're just going to slide that fitting right on over. You don't want to forget about putting this on because, of course, if you do, you're going to have to slide it on from all the way to the other end or just cut that end off that you end up flaring and then reflare it again in the end. So we have that on there. Now we can take our kit. We remember that we had to use the double flare, not the bubble flare. So I'm going to use this uh, specific kit for this. For 3 16 it's the smallest of the holes on that. I don't probably need to tell you exactly how to flare a brake line, but I will anyway. I'm just going to slide this right into position, hopefully. All right, so now you want to make sure that you have some of the line actually sticking out from here. You're going to take your corresponding adapter, the one for the 3 16 line, assuming that's what you have, and you just want to look at it. If you were to look at this adapter, you can see right down where my index finger is, you have that bottom ridge. We want to make sure that that bottom ridge is pretty much lined up with the line. If you have too much line sticking out, then of course you're going to have a flare that you have too much meat on it and it could potentially cause an issue. And if you have it in the opposite direction where there isn't enough line coming out, once again, you're going to have a ceiling issue. So just try to have it as close as possible. A little extra isn't really too bad. But uh, I'll just go ahead and slide it just in case. Double check. That looks decent. Now let's go ahead and crimp this down. All right, so now at this point we can just take our adapter, we're going to slide it right over the top of this. We'll grab the other piece here. Right onto the line. Snug this up by hand. Take a quick peek at it, you want to try to have it as straight as possible. Sometimes it can seem like it's a little off. Yep, that looks pretty good. Use this. Now what we want to do is just tighten this all the way up until the adapter touches up against this plate here. This is nice and easy. If I was using the steel lines, it would be a little harder. Slide that aside. So now at this point, it almost looks like it's a bubble flare, doesn't it? You can tell that it kind of bubbles out a little bit. What you want to do is just take this driver. We're going to go ahead and put it right on in there without having the adapter. What this will do is it'll press in those outer portion of the walls. It's going to drive it right in there, which is going to make it a double flare. It's going to be like double lined wall there. Once it feels like it wants to stop, usually I just try to go a teeny bit more, but I don't want to go too much because obviously I don't want to go ahead and crack the line by applying too much pressure on this. We can remove our tool. And now we're going to inspect the flare. You want to make sure it doesn't look like it's oblonged, maybe it's sitting at an angle or anything like that. And also just go ahead and take your fitting. We're going to try to slide it up there. Um, with this being very flexible line, if you get a tiny bend, like what's in this one right here, you can kind of tell that it's flexed a little bit. It's common for these not to want to slide up there, so you just kind of have to work it up there. That looks pretty good. It would be nice if it went a little further. Grab my 10. Use the right side. All right. So now that we have it up there, you just want to look at where the flare is in comparison to the fitting itself. You want to make sure that the flare comes out a little bit past the fitting itself, but it also lines up. That's super important. If it looks like it's kind of lined up here, but it's pushing out right there, you're going to end up having a leak. This one looks pretty great. So now the next thing that I always do is I just kind of take the entire line like this. I'm going to go ahead and start putting it up and into the vehicle here. I'll start in one side of the line, and then I'll continue on by running the rest. Now this line has to come up and over these ABS wires here, so of course you don't want to put it along the outside. That's going to cause an issue where you're pressing up against these and it can cause other issues as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this line, I'm just going to run it right down 
and pretty much trying to follow the areas that this needs to go. So if it goes over anything, that's where I need to go. If it looks like it needs to go under anything, also where I need to go. Now at this point, we have it kind of generally in the area. We'll just go ahead and bend this. We're going to start it into the um, wheel cylinder here. We'll just go in a couple threads, then we'll start setting this into all the mounting points. And then when we get down to the other end, we can go ahead and flare that as well. We don't want to flare anything now, just in case we need more or less line or anything the like. I'm going to grab my 10 millimeter wrench here. Okay. So now at this point, I still have it so the line's nice and loose. I don't have it completely screwed in. And the reason why I always leave it so it's still a little loose and I can pivot it is because I still need to mount it to everything. And if I was to make it so it's nice and tight and then I have to bend this, it could potentially cause a bend that I don't want to actually have. So I'm just going to go ahead and find my mounting points. I know on my application, I had one that's on the other side of the spring here. And essentially what I want to do is make sure that this brake line comes out far enough from the wheel cylinder, but not so far that it's going to get caught on anything, such as maybe a spring or anything that you might happen or have around. I'm going to go ahead and take this, I'm going to form it into shape, make sure that it's clipped into all of its mounting points as I bring it around. And as you bring it, you also want to make sure that it's not going to be touching up against the body anywhere, especially someplace that might act, end up moving. Because as you can tell, even with this beautiful line right here that we don't necessarily have to worry about rusting or rotting or breaking overall, it could still potentially get worn through if you have it rubbing on something. So with that said, let's just continue on bending it. As you can tell, this clip right here is broken. We'll have to figure something out for that, but I'm just pretty much going to bring it right along the line that it needs to be. And then, of course, we'll just try to plan out exactly how much line we need to continuously make this right here. So I'm just going to bring it to approximately here. That way there I can make a bend here, another one there, and bring it right into there. So let's go ahead and cut this. We can reflare it. Make sure I'm in the groove. Double check the end of your line. You just want to make sure that you didn't crimp it in or damage it any. We'll go ahead and take our fitting, whether it's old or new. Just go ahead and slide it right over that. Once again, you don't want to forget that because, well, how are you going to get it on there? You're going to have to cut your line again. Now we're going to flare it just like the other side. So there really isn't much to say. Slide this line in there. Make sure that it's protruding through a little bit here. Just double check it. Generally, you can do it by eye after you do a bunch of these, but oh yeah, perfect, look at me. Lucky Len. Okay. Let's grab our tool here. Get that adapter in there. Double flare this, fold in those walls. Go ahead and loosen this up. Okay, so. We're looking at the end here. Like I said before, you want the line to protrude a little bit out of the fitting there. As you can tell, it looks like it's lined up. It's not oblonged in any way. I feel as though that's going to make a perfect fit right inside this area here. So let's just go ahead and make sure we're still inside all of our mounting points, at least as close as possible. We can start making our bends. Make sure this is all the way down at the end. If you have it here and you start making your bends, well, <laughs> good luck. So. And that like that. And this one, like I said, this tubing right here is just, it really is amazing in comparison to using the steel line. Um, this is just a lot more forgiving. If you make your bend in the wrong spot, generally you can just kind of reform it a little bit. 
which is always a special treat, especially the longer the line. Last thing you want to do is have to remake a line. Go ahead and start this in. So maybe some people are looking at this that have made break lines before and they're thinking, boy, I really could have made this bend just a little bit closer and just shaved off that extra piece of line. And yeah, that's true. It's just a little bit harder to bend the closer you get to the end. And of course, if I was to have made a mistake in any of this process and I had to trim it, there's always the possibility that I made my, sh my line too short at that point and then I'm just gonna have to start all over. So by doing this, as you can tell, there really isn't a lot hanging off. I don't feel as though it's gonna get caught on anything while I'm driving down the road or get caught on any suspension that might be happening to move around near it. So at this point, we can just go ahead and tighten these up. I'll snug this like that and then I'll use my uh, flare and wrench, make them nice and tight. Secure. Do the same to this one over here. Yeah, that feels really good. Okay. All right. So now at this point, I'm going to find something else to try to mount this into. If I can't, um, there's something that I'm going to have to figure out. There's no way that I'm ever going to leave a brake line just floating around like this while you're driving down the road, hitting bumps or anything the like. This is just going to be rattling around and it's very unsafe overall because like I said, it could get rubbed through or damaged in some way and that's just not how I roll. If I do something, it needs to be perfect or at least to the best of my ability. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find some clips. Uh, so now I have some new tabs and they're not the same as the original tabs. I wish I had someone that were proper, but uh, it is something that I can put here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it right in. Do the same on the other one. And now at this point, I'm just going to use some wire ties and I just want to make sure that I put it into place. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this right around. Some people might say to try to put a little bit of uh, grease or something in between this area, and maybe that's good for keeping the moisture away, but it's not good for keeping dirt and debris away. If anything, it's going to accumulate more, and you're going to find that you have an issue. So I never really try to put any of that on here, and we don't have to worry about moisture because, well, we got the special lines. So. Feels great. Do the same to this one. Got our ABS wire here. That goes. Yeah. Just bend that away a little bit. Like I said, if I had the proper clips, that would obviously be a lot better. I would recommend using the proper materials. I just don't have access to it at this point. So this is what I've got. And it's a lot better than nothing. So now let's refocus on the line real quick. All 
right, so we've got both of those mounting points in there. It's nice and secure. Let's just refocus on the line. We just want to essentially pay attention and make sure we have clearance between the line and any metallic surface or pretty much anything, even, you know, wiring. So uh, we'll just come right along, making sure there's at least semi-gap coming in between all these areas, at least enough so when this does vibrate around a little bit, it's not going to be rubbing and it's not going to cause damage. I got it in its mount, coming up along here. This looks perfect. It's not far away from this, but it's also not super close to the point that it could cause an issue. Okay. So this line looks great at this point. I double checked everything. I made sure that it was secure. It's definitely not gonna rub on anything. That's super important to me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other rear line on this because like I told you, it is rotted. I don't like the way that it looks and I'm not just gonna do half the job and then just hope that the other one's gonna be fine while the person's driving down the road. So. After you already seen me do this one, I don't expect that you probably want to sit around and watch me do the other one. I'll get it done real quick and then we can continue on to the rest. Please go on. position here. Make sure that's nice and tight. Check that line. Make sure it's sitting into its grooves. Okay, so now at this point, we're ready to start bleeding the brakes. Okay. Now we can get under the hood over here. We're gonna come right back over to the master cylinder. Uh, sometimes inside these, you're gonna have like a little screen. This essentially is just to make sure that no debris makes its way inside. Let's get that right out of the way. We're going to double check to make sure we still have fluid in the master cylinder. Like I said before, if you happen to have run the master cylinder dry, it could have potentially caused some areas where there's air bubbles inside of your braking system. And that's going to, of course, wreak havoc inside of your ABS system. If you don't get all the air out of there, you might find that you have a low brake pedal or even no brake pedal. Sometimes, even if it's inside the ABS system right there or the module, you might end up finding that you have premature um, ABS activation, so essentially you go ahead and you try to come to a stop, and before you even stop, the ABS is kind of kicking on, and you can feel that. Generally, that's because there's air in there, so 
Let's look. This actually still has plenty of fluid in it, so that's awesome. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is just try to suck out as much of this fluid that's inside the master cylinder as possible. Sometimes this can be difficult if you don't have the proper tools. Um, if that's the case, essentially what I'm trying to do is just try to replace all the brake fluid that's inside this with brand new fluid. So if you wanted to, you can make your way down to the right rear and just start kind of drawing the fluid out of the lines right there. But just be uh, very careful not to let this run dry, essentially. You just want it to be as low as possible. I have a vacuum, so uh, I'm going to see about putting that on there. I'll grab the air hose. Oh, yeah. Just try to get as much of this out of there as possible. Okay, so I've got my DOT3 brake fluid, which like I said is from my application here. I'm just going to go ahead and put this screen back in. This is supposed to catch any of the debris, like I said. Uh, it really only makes sense to just have it in there, just in case. Sometimes when you open these up, you're going to notice that you have that film that's up along the top there. You want to make sure you go ahead and pull it all completely out of there. Don't leave any of it hanging because, of course, it could potentially get inside your braking system. Go ahead and fill this right up with our manufacturer specified fluid here. Okay, so now at this point, we know that we have the master cylinder at least up to the maximum line. At this point, I'm gonna continue on down at the brakes. Before we head down to the right rear brake, what I wanna do is just hop inside the passenger compartment. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bar that we put in there, you know, the pedal depressor. We'll get that out of the way, and then we can move to the right rear. We're gonna start drawing the fluid out of that area. Of course, at first, there's probably mostly gonna be air because, well, we replaced the line down there. After that, we're gonna keep drawing out some of the fluid, and essentially, we wanna to try to go ahead and pull all the brake fluid out of the line and make sure that it's replaced with the brand new fluid. So of course, we're just gonna keep our brake fluid right up in this area where we can access it. That way there, we can keep coming up here and we're just gonna keep double checking the master cylinder. It's super important. I already talked to you about what happens if the master cylinder goes dry and you get air in the system, so I'm not gonna reiterate. But essentially, we just wanna keep making sure that we're checking. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. I'll pop this bar out of here. There we are. Head back to the right rear. We can start drawing out some of that fluid. Okay, so I need my eight millimeter, my vacuum. It's on here. Okay. Get our vacuum on here. Now what we're watching for here is a steady trickle of fluid coming through. As you can tell, there's still a lot of air that's getting drawn through. And yeah, this might not be making the perfect seal on the bleeder screw itself. So essentially, we just want to let this go for a little bit. Like I said, we're trying to go ahead and draw any of the fluid that's inside the existing lines. Um, and so we can get, replace it with the brand new fluid, be safest overall. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, turn that off. Now we're just going to watch and wait for a trickle here. Once we have a, you know, a little trickle, we can go ahead and close this off. We'll go to the left rear, and then we'll continue to the right front, and then finish off at the left front, which is closest to the master cylinder. A little bit of, little bit of fluid trickling out, so that should be good enough for when we go ahead and do our manual bleed after we're done with this. any fluid. There we go. I'm starting to get some fluid coming through this.
Oh yeah, that's flowing good. Go check that master cylinder while it's doing its job. Okay, so this one's pretty good. Wait and see if this does anything. Perfect. <laughs> nope. Go ahead and close that off. We'll make sure there's no air in the system, of course, when we do the manual bleed. Maybe if I go the right way. There we go, we're starting to get a little bit of fluid. Come on. Why is it messing with me, Phil? Seems like it was working. All right, to the right front. Good. And close this off. All right, to the left front. Now we can get ready for our manual bleed. All right, so now at this point, we're gonna get ready to do manual bleed. This is gonna be easiest with two people. There is, of course, a one-person procedure, but for me, I'm gonna have a spare person inside the vehicle. The person inside the vehicle is just gonna go ahead and start pressing on that brake nice and slow. We just want them to press it all the way down, let it up, down, up, three times. On the last time they're gonna hold it, let me know that they're holding it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up each bleeder screw, starting at the right rear. Once I open it up, that pedal's gonna end up going down a little bit. They're gonna let me know that it's on the floor. I'll close it off, and then we're gonna repeat the process. Essentially, what we're trying to do here is just make sure that there's no air inside of our braking system. This is super important. If you have air in the braking system, you're gonna feel as though you have a soft, spongy brake pedal. So, with that said, we already double-checked the master cylinder to make sure it's nice and full. That's super important. I talked to you about it a bunch of times at this point. Let's start at the right rear. I'm gonna go ahead and have my person go ahead and pump this up. Pump the pedal, please. Now, while they're pedaling, I'm kind of just watching. You can stop pumping. Got a little loose line or something here. Yeah, you can stop. Now, at this point, I can go ahead and hold. I'm going to open this up. We're watching right here at the bleeder screw for any air bubbles. OK, pump. Go ahead and pump it. Now obviously this isn't a race of any sort. You want to make sure that you keep doing this until you're 100% sure that there's no air inside the braking system. So pretty much all three of those pumps that I just saw right there, I didn't see any air bubbles coming out. So at this point I feel confident that our right rear is good. Uh, you can go ahead and release. At this point I'm going to make my way over to the left rear. I'm going to do the same exact thing over there. Essentially, like I said, we're just trying to make sure there's no air inside of our braking system. See, on this side right here, we have a lot of air bubbles coming out. Look at all that. That's really bad. Okay, closed it off. Go ahead and pump. If you were to leave all that air inside the braking system here, you're not going to have very good braking. Let's see. Oof. Go ahead and pump. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bit of air on that one as well. Go ahead and pump. Let's keep trying this here.
Go ahead and pump. All right. Now at this point, I didn't see any more air coming from this area. We'll just go ahead and clean this down so the brake fluid stops dripping and we can move to the right front. Make sure you top off that master cylinder. All right. So on the right front, you wanna be very careful because this bleeder screw is gonna be facing towards the wheel well. Um, so if you get any of those spurts, it might potentially hit off that wheel well and deflect back at your face. So go ahead and pump up the brakes. That one looked great. Go ahead and pump. Okay, so both those look good. Go ahead and pump. All right. All three that time came out perfect. We didn't have any air, so I feel confident this one looks good. Let's make our way over to the left front. Let's try this one. Go ahead and pump. Pump. Holding. All right, go ahead and pump it up. Holding. And uh, you're all set. You can go ahead and jump down. Just kidding. Um, okay, so now at this point, we bled all four brakes and uh, we have no more air inside the system. So we'll just double check everything, make sure all of your bleeder screws are nice and tight. And then of course, we're gonna make sure that we clean them down and put on our bleeder screw covers. The reason why you wanna put on the covers, of course, so no debris or moisture makes its way inside there. It's gonna make it so it freezes up inside the caliper and that's gonna end up being an issue. So uh, yeah, we'll just get this cleaned up, put on the bleeder screws, put it back together. All right. I'm getting pretty excited here. This is pretty much over with. We're just gonna go ahead and get our wheels back on here. I always start on my wheels. I'll bottom out the lug nuts. Um, after that, of course, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the wheel back on the ground, and then we're gonna torque these to manufacturer specifications. Amazing how brake lines can rot out like that sometimes. You know, like I said, this car's 66,000 miles on it, but it's already 11 years old, so. Sometimes sitting's worse than driving around for cars. Once you have everything zipped on there, go ahead and put the wheels back on the ground. We'll go ahead and torque these to manufacturer specifications in a crisscross order. You never want to just go around in a circle. You could, of course, have the wheel off kilter or something like that, and that's just going to be really bad driving down the road. If 
you have center covers, you just want to go ahead and put these on, or hubcaps, whatever you want to call them. We'll make sure we line up the valve stem hole. Do every wheel. So now at this point, we know all the wheels are torqued, which is great. You obviously want to be as safe as possible driving down the road. You can continue on by removing the jack or whatever you're using completely. We'll get back under the hood. We're just going to double, triple, quadruple check the master cylinder. You want to make sure it's nice and full up to that maximum line with the manufacturer specified fluid. want to make sure that your cap's on nice and tight. Like I said, DOT 3 brake fluid and DOT 4 fluid is hydroscopic. It's going to try to absorb any moisture. You also want to make sure you put the cap back on your, uh, your brake fluid, whatever that is. At this point, I'm pretty com confident that I've got the problem fixed. Obviously, we found that we had a broken brake line here. It wasn't really necessarily broken to the point that it was leaking yet, but as you saw when I was trying to remove it and even inspect it, it's really thin in this area right here, and that's where those brackets was. Like I said, it's super common for this to happen. Essentially, any place that the line isn't coated, there's going to be moisture and everything else that kind of sits on it, and it's going to start eating it away. Now, if you were to look at this line in comparison to the new line that we put in there, at least as far as the thickness of the walls, you can tell which line would be safer overall. So now obviously by looking at these lines, especially along the way in the video, you were probably noticing why we wanted to make this video for you. It's not exactly super common for people to go ahead and climb underneath their vehicle and just start taking a peek at their brake lines, especially if you happen to take a look under the hood and you see that those brake lines look as though they're nice and coated. Why would you think anything would ever be wrong? Well, something to think about is what you happen to have saw. Generally along those mounting areas where the lines are supposed to go across a frame or something metal that's going to be stable, essentially they're going to want to hold it still, so they're going to have some kind of like little clamps on it. And in those areas, if there isn't any coating on the lines, you're going to have rot that looks more than likely just like this. We want to make sure that you're going to be as safe as possible driving the, down the road because your safety is, of course, of the utmost importance to us. So that's why we wanted to make this video. Now, for this video right here, I'm just going to go ahead and take this thing for a little road test, show you what the brakes feel like. We're going to do a little panic stop action here, and I just want to make sure that everything feels like it should. So let's go ahead and close the hood. We're going to double check everything, and then we'll just go ahead and get it out of here and go for a little road test. Let's do it. Okay, so we're outside. We're getting ready to go for our road test. Of course, we've got our safety belt on at all times whenever we're behind the wheel. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. So let's go ahead and go for a road test. I'm going to go ahead and test these brakes. When I do it, I'm going to start off by going slow. I'm going to come to a gradual stop. Do that a couple times just to make sure everything feels good. And then what we're going to do is go a little bit faster, make sure that we don't have any cars around us, and we're going to do a panic stop. The reason why I want to make sure that I do a panic stop anytime that I do brake lines or brakes in general is because there's going to be a lot more pressure coming through the braking system when I do that. It's going to be coming from the brake booster here. So by doing that, it's going to apply the maximum amount of pressure down to those brakes and we're going to be able to know for sure that we fix this problem. So the brakes work. Back to the studio. All right, so these brakes feel great. I feel confident that we fixed the problem. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned a little something. It's a little cold outside right now. You can see my breath. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the window up. I'll take this for a little bit more of a road test just to make sure it's 100% safe. We'll get it back inside the shop. I just wanna make sure that I don't have any brake fluid leaks after all this.
Okay, friends, so I finished checking underneath the vehicle. I didn't find any leaks. I made sure that everything was nice and clean. I don't want any brake fluid dripping down, of course. After that, I just came under here. I double checked my master cylinder one last time. It's super important. We wanna make sure that it's full and it still is. If for some reason it seemed like it was a little bit low at this point, more than likely we did still have air inside the system if you didn't happen to find a leak. Other than that, when I was on my road test, I did some slow brakes. Obviously, I wanna to try to heat up those brakes, make sure everything's functioning properly. And then, when we were nice and safe, I made sure that I did a little panic brake. Like I said, when I was on the road test, is when you do a panic brake, there's gonna be a lot more pressure getting forced through those brake lines. So if there is any weak points, or even maybe you left a fitting loose or anything the like, it's gonna force fluid out of that area, and you're gonna know where you need to go to the fix. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned a little something. If there's something that you liked or you want to talk about, leave it in the comment section below because I always love to hear from you. If you like the video, smash on the like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching. I gotta get this thing out of here.